everyone. Let's wrap up March. Let's start with March videos. I uploaded two. Well, three. But yeah, I wasn't feeling it. I had kind of a weird March. I wasn't feeling well. And I told you all about it in my letter to March. And I thank you very much for your wishes that April will be better. And it looks like it's working because at least I've gone out more. So that helped already. Another video I uploaded that wasn't bookish was uh, Thoughts Before Coffee. And we talked about comparisons and the different expectations we have on comparing ourselves to others, how we shouldn't do it to feel bad about ourselves, but it's perfectly acceptable and expected to feel good about ourselves. And I really loved your comments on that. And there are apparently more things we connect with comparisons. It's a complex topic. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed the discussion. And that were all the non-bookish videos. And so let's get into the books, starting with the physical books. I finally picked up The Stranger or The Outsider and I read it in German. I liked it and I didn't like it. It is a fast read. It's a little bit over 100 pages and it reads really fast. But at the end of the book, I kept wondering why this is such a praised, important book, a must read. It's the story of a young man who lost his mother and then he murdered someone and then he goes on trial. Sort of. A little bit like that. And the whole book is him being very passive, not involved, having a girlfriend, but always telling her, no, I don't love you. And she's quite okay with that. The neighbor beats up his girlfriend and he's just like, okay, I'll support you and help you get out of jail and frame the woman. And yeah, not a likable person. And then in the trial, he's basically not judged for murdering someone, but more on trial for being this passive, non-traditional feeling person. I think I understood everything the book wanted to do and the book told me, but I just don't get the importance of the book. Still recommend reading it just for the knowledge of having read it. The other physical book I read was The Milkman and that accompanied me the whole month. I have a strange relationship with this book. I started off feeling it is amazing. I really enjoyed the writing. I like the perspective. I like the non-naming of things, but giving everything different descriptive names instead of using the real names. And I like the character. But then at some point in the book, the character or the narrator gets portrayed or questioned in a way where you think, wait a minute, is everything she told us not real? Is her perceptiveness that was so impressive in the beginning not real? Did she get everything wrong? And then I started to mistrust the narrator and that had me question everything that she told me. And then the story continued and I got kind of annoyed and bored with the way it was written and I lost interest in all the characters. About 100 pages, 60 pages to the end, I put it aside for a very, very long time because I didn't really feel like finishing it. And then when I picked it up and read the final pages, I basically thought the last chapter wasn't necessary at all. So what's the story? It's about a young woman, I think she's 17 or 18, in Ireland and it's in the 70s set in a city that is very divided by they always call it the political problem so there is a right religion the wrong religion the right side of the street the wrong side of the street the right part of town the wrong part of town the right country the wrong country it's very clearly divided and that's a fun part about the writing that it's all clear but it's never named so that was very well done i really enjoyed that and we see this young girl growing up and facing a stalker who's one of the political leading persons or rather not the political leading persons but he plays a very important role in the political upheaval and fight that is going on so he's a scary man and he's following her grooming her and what I really liked about the book is the portrayal of 
what that does with the girl, how she is trying to deal with this, how she's trying to overcome the fear and not overstep things and not fall for it and keep her boundaries, but also how it affects her, how it affects her behavior, her relationships with everyone else, her general perception of the community and in the community, how the community treats her. All of that was very well done. But then it just loses itself. And yeah, I kind of lost track and was not interested by the end. Very disappointing. So those were all the physical books. On ebook, I read The Taming of the Shrew. I wanted something short and fast while I got stuck in Milkman. So I picked up this one, which I've always meant to read. I'm very familiar with the story. If you don't know, it's basically two sisters. One is beautiful, one is annoying. and the beautiful sister cannot marry before the older annoying one is married. So people find someone to marry her so that the younger one is available. That is a very bad description of the story. Anyways, if you have seen 10 Things I Hate About You or any other of the adaptations that are available on the story, you are familiar with the story. I think it's a very much adapted story and I find I like the adapted stories much better than the original because what I found lacking in this very short play is more depth to the characters, more feeling, more show or more experience of the changing of the behavior and the relationship between the characters. Nevertheless, I'm quite glad I finally read it. The other ebook I read is Territory of Light. This is a very short episodic book. It shows the story or rather it gives us a year in the life of a young mother who has just separated from her husband and moved into her own flat alone with the three-year-old daughter. And it's always chapters addressing something. I think it was published episodically in original. The book was written in the late 70s and if I understood it correctly, it hasn't been translated into English until 2018. So it's been out a while but not in English or accessible to non-Japanese speaking people. And I really enjoyed the writing. I liked how the area is portrayed, how descriptive things were of the light and the apartment and how it shaped the feelings of the woman. I also really enjoyed seeing her progress through the separation, the dealing of being a single mother. What I noticed also is that I had to remind myself that this was written in the end of the 70s and not just now, where the events or the just being in a separation and having a small child as a single mom is much more normalized than it was back then. And I also found myself thinking a lot of times, how can you leave this kid alone when she went to the bar across the street? Things that no one would do anymore today, but it's been the 70s. People behave differently and it wasn't neglect, but it was really, you could see how she struggled with life, with being a single mom, with having to work and all the situations. And I really recommend it. It's, very well written. I really enjoyed it and it's a very fast read. The rest of the books were listened to on audio. I listened to quite a few shorter audiobooks, so there are quite a few. I listened to The Armies of Those I Loved, which is a science fiction, I think, novella because the audiobook was just a little over two hours long and I could listen to it on a long walk. This was in the future where things have moved on and I'm just noticing now that I don't remember the details of the story. It was very descriptive and portraying the events and the scenes in the world that exist there. It wasn't very plot driven and it wasn't very character driven. So if you don't like that, you probably won't like this. But I rather enjoyed the world building, the setting and also the characters we followed and the insight that we got into them. So I can recommend it. It was available as one of the free books in the Audible Members Plus catalog. The only book that I reviewed this month is Open Water. I also listened to this on audiobook and this was a very interesting audiobook experience for me because I usually listen to everything at 1.35 to 1.5 speed or sometimes even faster. 
But this one, I really slowed it down because the narration didn't lend itself to be listened to faster. You needed to take your time with that. So I can only imagine how it feels reading this book. It's also rather short and it's the story of a young man and a young woman getting to know each other, falling in love, having a relationship and then dealing with things that happen in a relationship. On top of that, we also experience or get to experience them being young black people in London or Ireland and the experiences they have because of being black. And it's written in episodes. You move from one episode to the next. It's more like zooming in and zooming out out of their lives. It's narrated from the man's point of view, but not in an I perspective, but a you perspective. It's like he's telling himself the story. So he's always addressing you and that connects you to the story. And I found it very interesting how relatable a lot of the parts were for me and how unrelatable others. So relatable, the relationship and getting to know someone and yeah, just how insecure and vulnerable you are in a young relationship. That feels very relatable for me, but not being black in London, those parts were not relatable for me, but they felt more close because of the relatability of the rest and the perspective of the you narration. I thought that was very interesting and very well done. I can highly recommend this audiobook and I assume the book is just as well if you read it yourself. Then I listened to more sequels. Warlock Holmes book four and book five, which means I'm on track with all the books that are published in the Warlock Holmes series. I want to upload a series review hopefully next week. So as it's book four and five, I'm not going into details. It's a retelling of Sherlock Holmes, as you probably assumed already, and the roles are a little bit shifted. Holmes is a warlock and he's a little bit stupid and weird. And Watson is the smart one who is the deductive detective and using his smarts. He's also very judgmental. So it's a hilarious series. Like I said, series review is coming up. Only two more books to go, and those were non-fiction books. Gegenwartsbewältigung is a German non-fiction book, which was published last year, and it also addresses the corona pandemic, but from a different perspective. More of the idea of what solidarity we were all of a sudden able to come up with as a society, and how it showed who we're willing to be solidary with. Solidary? Is that the word? I don't know. Anyways, I listen to it in German, as you probably imagine, because it's a German book. It's talking about Germany and the German society, and I can highly recommend it to Germans. It's not only addressing the Corona pandemic, but in general, the public or the political landscape that we have in Germany right now, the things we tend to practically ignore a lot about right and left-wing terrorism and the misconceptions we have about that and the numbers that prove that right terrorism and Nazis in Germany are a problem again, which people tend to ignore and yeah, pretend it's not that big a problem. And I think it's very important that we face those facts. So highly recommended. Very fast read. I think it's five hours. I listened to it in one day. Disability, unfortunately, mm -hmm. I can't say I connected to it. It's a lot of short stories or essays on personal accounts of disabled people in America and their experiences in being disabled in different situations with society, with people in general. And yeah, it's personal accounts. So it kind of feels bad to say that I didn't connect it or that I didn't care. But a lot of the stories, I just felt like listening to them in the background. I didn't care if I missed a bit or if I didn't quite catch what they were talking about. I think it was very informative. You got a broad overview of different problems and different challenges that exist in society and also for disabled people being part of society, being seen and how able people react and behave towards disabled people. So those were interesting aspects. I wouldn't say it was a waste of time, but I kind of didn't connect to it. I didn't care about it as much as I thought I would. I didn't get as much information or, yeah, I don't even know what I wanted to get out of it, to be honest. I thought it was more informative and not so many personal accounts, which could have worked, 
but for some reason it didn't work for me. And that was my March. Reading wise, I think it was a good month, even though looking back, I read a lot less than I usually did in recent months. I didn't listen to as many minutes as I usually do, and I didn't read as many pages as I usually do. But I read more books, probably because they were all rather short. Well, We'll see what April brings. I'm still working on finishing series, so April is probably focusing on series again. <sighs> let's see. Let me know in comments how your March went, and let's hope that April will be warm finally and spring comes. Thank you all for watching. Bye-bye.